Okay. <clears throat> so what we're going to do, we talked about exponents. We'll still be talking about exponents. We're also going to talk about radicals. Okay. So radical is this sign that you see here. Okay. This means the square root of 25. What's the square root of 25? Yeah, you know that. That's 5. The reason it's 5 is because 25 equals 5 to what power? Yeah. Because 25 is 5 squared, we say that the square root of 25 is 5. Okay? Cube root of negative 27. It means there is a number I can multiply by itself how many times? Three, three times and get negative 27. What number can be multiplied by itself three times and give you negative 27? No, 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 no. Oh, negative, three. negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 is negative 27. So the reason this works is because negative 27 is the same thing as negative 3 cubed. Okay? So when I see this radical cube root, it means what number can be multiplied three times and give me the number that's under that radical? So a negative 3 cubed is negative 27. Therefore, the cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. Now, the way we will say this is this is the nth root of a. So the nth root of a number, a, if it's b, then a has to equal b to what power? To the n power. Okay. So if b to the n is equal to a, then we can say that a is the nth root of b. Now, my last class claimed they'd never seen this before. I'm having a hard time believing it, but we want to be comfortable going back and forth between a radical form, which is when you see this radical sign, and an exponential form, where you see an exponent. The nth root of a is the same as a to the 1 over n power. You've seen this before, right? No? Yes? No? I feel like you have. I'm, just, I'm not trying to argue, but I'm just like... Okay. I just thought, okay, well, you're seeing it now. So when you see the nth root of a, that's the same thing as writing a to the 1 over n power. Okay, when you see a to the 1 over n, that means this is the nth root of a. So you get comfortable going back and forth uh, between those expressions. So when I see something like this, 25 to the 1 half power, that's the same as the square root of 25. Okay? If I have you know, 36 to the 1 half power, uh, 36 to the 1 half power, that's the square root of 36. 27 to the 1 third power, what is that? That's the cube root of 27. Okay. So you want to be comfortable going back and forth between an exponential form and a radical form. Okay. So if we're taking roots of numbers, um, the root can be an even number or an odd number. Okay, I'm taking the third root or the fourth root or the fifth root. Let's look at cases where I'm taking an even root. Okay, something like this, the square root. So when you don't see a number here, an index, this, this index is 3. That means cube root. When you don't see an index, it means that the index is what? 2, two square root. Okay, so this is the square root of negative 8. There are no real numbers that do that. Okay can't take the square root or the even root of a negative number, but we do know that this is going to be what? It's going to be the square root of 8 times i. Okay, So it's not a real number, but there's a complex number for, uh, for that one. In this case, if we look at real roots, what number can I multiply by itself 12 times and get a 0? Zero? 0. Zero. Real easy for that one. This means the fourth root of 16. What does that mean, fourth root of 16? I'm looking for a number that I can multiply by itself what? Four times and get 16. Is there such a number? Two. Okay. Look at the case when I'm taking an odd root, third root. I'm looking for a number that can be multiplied by itself what? Three times and give me negative eight. What number does that? Negative 2, okay? So you note with, with odd roots, I don't have i as my answer. With If I'm taking the even root of a negative number, there's not a real number that does that. There are complex numbers that do that. But in this case, there is one real number that satisfies this. 
What about this, the ninth root of zero? What's the ninth root of zero? What number can be multiplied by itself nine times and give you zero as an answer? Zero. Okay. Fifth root of 32. I'm looking for a number that can be multiplied by itself what? Five times and give me 32. What is that number? That is two. Okay. There was a question in the last class about the page before where you had all those powers to know. You don't have to memorize all of those, but just be comfortable. You're going to start seeing the same numbers today, you know, like 16, 27, 32, 64, you know, 81. So the you know, powers of 2 and 3 and 4, you should, should know a lot of those, and you'll get to them just by, by working it. So let's evaluate some expressions. First one here, cube root of negative 64. I'm looking for a number that does what? Yeah. What number can I multiply by itself three times and get a negative 64? Yeah, it's negative 4 because negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4 equal negative 64. So that's why, because I know that now negative 4 cubed is equal to negative 64. If negative 4 cubed is negative 64, then the cube root of negative 64 is negative 4. Square root of negative 64. Yeah, this one. So, yeah, Kyle's on top of this. This is 8i. Okay. When you square 8i, you get 64i squared, which is negative 64. So in this case, there's not a real solution, but there is a complex. So this is a complex solution. Square root of 1 over 64. I'm looking for a number that can multiply by itself how many times? Twice and give 1 over 64. 1 over 8. Okay. So... This is 1 8th because 1 8th squared equal 164. Cube, negative cube root of 64. Okay, So the negative is just along for the ride here. I'm looking for the cube root of 64. What number can be multiplied three times and give you 64? 4. So this is negative four. Now what about the next one? The negative of the square root of negative 64. What's the square root of, so negative of, I can look at this, this is negative one times 64. What's the square root of negative one? I. What's the square root of 64? Eight. So this is a negative 8i. Okay, this one's just where the teacher's trying to trick you. The negative cube root of negative 164. Okay. Let's look at cube root of negative 164. I'm looking for a number that can be multiplied three times and give you negative 164. Yeah, so the cube root of 64 is 4. So this is going to be negative of negative one-fourth. Because if you look at negative one-fourth times negative one-fourth times negative one-fourth, three negatives multiplied gives you what? A negative. So this is negative one over 64. What's negative of negative one-fourth? Well, it's not a trick question. Negative of negative one-fourth is? One fourth. Okay. Answer is one fourth in this case. Okay. Okay. I'm looking for easy, hard, okay. It's January. What are, what are, what are the categories you're feeling today? Okay. <clears throat> okay. We need to be very comfortable going back and forth between an exponential form and a radical form, okay? So when I see something with rational exponents, rational just means, starts with an F, fraction, fraction okay? Rational exponents, 
should be comfortable expressing them with exponents or radicals. A to the m over n, okay, what you want to write, that can be written as A to the 1 over n times m. Because what, what do I do? Well, A to the 1 over m times m, what do I do with these exponents to evaluate that? I do what to them? I multiply, I add. What do I do? Multiply. What's 1 over n times m? It's, it's m over n, okay? These are the same things, okay? Now, a to the 1 over n, we determine that that's also called in radical form the what? The nth root of a. So this can be written as the nth root of a to the m or the nth root of a and then raise that to the m power. Okay, you don't have to memorize all this, but you just need to look. Anytime you have a fractional exponent, the bottom of the fraction, this is the root. So this means the nth root of a, and then the top of the fraction is a power that you're raising it to. So we can say that this is the nth root of a raised to the m power. Okay. So anytime I see a fractional exponent, the bottom is the root, the top is the power that I'm raising it to. Now, the only thing different here, what's the difference between this and this? Negative exponent. With negative exponents, how do you make a negative exponent positive? Yeah, wherever you find it, you move it to the other spot. So in this case, if this is on the top of a fraction, I will make that positive by moving it to a bottom of a fraction. Okay? And then once I get to here, this is the same thing. This is the nth root of a to the m power. So you can write it the nth root of a to the m or the nth root of a then raised to the m. It doesn't matter which order those exponents occur. Okay? Now, rather than memorize all of that, let's just work with it, and I think you'll get the handle of it. So I want to evaluate 125 to the 2 thirds. Okay? What I need to do is look and say, i got choices here. I can square 125 and then take the cube root. Okay? That's what this means. The 2 means to square it. The 3 means cube root. So here are my choices. I can square 125 and go find the cube root. The other choice, I can take the cube root of 125 and then what? Square. And then square it. Which of the things do you think I want to do? The second. the second one. Why do you think I want to do that? You get a, number you get a smaller number, OK? I don't know what the square of 125 is, and then heck if I know how to find the cube root of it without a calculator. My numbers get bigger. But if I take the cube root of 125, I get a number that's what compared to 125? Smaller or larger? Smaller. I want to work with smaller numbers or larger numbers? Smaller. Okay. So I'm going to do the cube root of 125, and then I'm going to do what to it? And I'm going to square it. So that's what this means. This is going from exponential form to radical form. Cube root of 125, that's a number that you can multiply by itself. How many times? Three times and get 125. What is that number? Five, because five times five times five is 125. So this is five squared. What's five squared? 25. Okay. And these problems, I have to always work this out. Like I can. You, you ask me what 5 squared is, I can tell you on pretty much any day of the week, it's 25. But I can't look at 125 to the 2 thirds and like, oh yeah, that's 25. I have to always work these out. The way you work it out is the bottom of that fractional exponent is the root. The top of that fractional exponent is the power. Okay? This one, what's the trick in this one? A negative exponent. No problem for you because how do we handle negative exponents? All we have to do is just move the move the uh, move it around. So it's in the top of the fraction. So this is one over eight to the four thirds. Now I have positive exponents. Now you can't take the negative cube root. It doesn't make sense. You know I couldn't take the negative cube root of eight. That that doesn't make sense. The, the the index can't be negative. It has to be positive. So that's why I only work with positive exponents. What does this mean, 8 to the 4 thirds? It means the what? Cube root of 8 to the fourth. Okay. 
So this is 1 over cube root of 8, all of that raised to the fourth power. What's the cube root of 8? 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so this is 1 over 2 to the fourth. What's 2 to the fourth? 16. This answer is what? Yeah, 1 over 16. What's easy? There we go. Okay. Okay, we'll work on we'll, we'll make it more confusing toward the end. <laughs> We're working up. <laughs> Negative 32 to the 2 fifths. What is being raised to the 2 fifths power? No. What is being raised to the 2 fifths power? Not 2. Someone may have said it and I just hard to hear it. What is being raised to the 2 fifths power? It's 32, okay? So there's a difference between this. This tells you that negative 32 is being raised to the 2 fifths power. In this problem, only what's immediate to the left is raised to that power. What's immediate to the left is 32, not negative 32, okay? So this problem, the negative is just along for the ride, okay? So this is negative of, what does that mean, the what root? fifth root, the fifth root of 32, and I'm going to raise all of that to what power? The second power, okay? So remember, this exponent has no bearing on the negative sign. If the exponent applied to the negative sign, it would look like this, okay? So know the difference there. What's the fifth root of 32? Two, two because two to the fifth is 32. So this is negative... 2 squared. What's 2 squared? 4. This answer is yeah, negative 4. Okay. Now, if the problem had been this one right here, that would be the fifth root of negative 32 squared. What's the fifth root of negative 32? Negative 2. So this would be negative 2 squared, which would be 4. That's the difference there. Okay. So just keep in mind, know the difference between when you look at that exponent, it's not negative 32 being raised to the 2 fifths power, only the 32. Okay? Let's convert these expressions to radical form. Okay? And then we'll evaluate. So this means the what root? The fourth root of 81. And when I get that number, I would do what to it? I will cube it, okay? What's the fourth root of 81? That means a number that can be multiplied by itself four times and give me 81. That's three. Remember, 81 is nine times nine. Nine is what? Three times three. So this is three to the fourth. So this is three cubed. What's three cubed? 27, okay? So in and of itself, these are pretty straightforward steps that I'm going through. Um, but like I said, I can look at this and like, oh yeah, that's 27. I can't look at this and say, that's 20. I have to work this out every time. These fractions, I don't, I can't memorize what fractional exponents are like this. Mm -hmm. Now, negative 27 to the negative four thirds, there are two tricks here. What are they? Yeah, there's a negative exponent and a negative in front. So what is being raised to the negative four thirds power? 27, not negative 27, okay? So how do I get rid of the, how do, I hate to say get rid of it. How do I make the negative exponent a positive exponent? I move it. It's in the top of a fraction. I move it to the bottom, okay? So this is going to be negative of 27 to the 4 thirds, okay? The negative is just along for the ride here. It's not being raised to the negative 4 thirds. So what does it mean in the bottom? 27 to the 4 thirds. That means the cube root of 27 to the 4th. So this is negative 1 over cube root of 27 to the 4th. What is the cube root of 27? It's 3. So this is going to be negative 1 over 3 to the 4th. Yeah. What's 3 to the 4th? 
81. So this is negative, negative 1 over 81. Okay, next problem works very similar. What's being raised to the negative 2 fifths? 32 or negative 32? 32, okay. So to take care of the negative exponent, I'm going to write this as 1 over, or negative 1 over 32 to the 2 fifths. What does 32 to the 2 fifths mean? 5th root of 32 squared. Yeah. So this is negative 1 over the 5th root of 32 squared. Now, some of these are ones you'll just start with. 5th root of 32, this one you sort of start remembering is what? It's 2 because 2 to the 5th is 32. So this is negative 1 over 2 squared. What's 2 squared? 2 squared. Yeah, so this answer is negative 1 fourth. Now, negative 64 to the negative 3 halves. What is being raised to the negative 3 halves? Negative 64. Okay. So in this case, to deal with the negative exponent, I'm going to have 1 over negative 64 to the 3 halves. What does that mean? What does it mean to the 3 halves? It will be. It means the what? Square root of negative 64 and then cube it. Okay. So this is 1 over square root negative 64 cube. What's the square root of negative 64? 8i. Eight eight okay. So this is 1 over 8i cubed. What is 8 cubed? Someone's got to tell me because I don't know that one. 8 times 8 times 8? 512. 512? So this is 1 over 512i cubed. You think I'm going to leave it like that? <clears throat> yes or no? What's i cubed? I'm hearing all kinds of stuff. I squared. What's I squared? Yeah. So I cubed is I squared times I. So that's negative I. Yeah. So this is. Negative 1 over 512i. But last, so I'm, I'm probably going to be okay with that being answered unless I explicitly told you don't leave i in the bottom of a fraction. Last semester, we did not leave i in the bottom of the fraction. What did we do to make it go to the top? We, we rationalized this complex number. I multiply by, somebody was going to say it. Multiply by 1 in a certain form. Conjugate? So. I multiply by i over i, okay? So on the top, I'm going to get what? Negative i. And here I get 512 i squared. What's i squared? Negative 1. So this is going to simply be i over 512. So I would probably take either of those as the answer. Negative 1 over 512i or i over 512. So that is that coming back from last semester a little bit? Okay. Let's continue on. Um, switch colors here. Now, let's convert between radical and exponents. You should be very comfortable with that. I want to take this first expression that's in exponential form and convert it to radical form. 2x to the 2 thirds. What is being raised to the 2 thirds? X. What about the 2? It is just it is just along for the ride. Nothing is happening to the 2. So I can write this as 2 
What does it mean, x to the 2 thirds? What does that mean? That means what? The what? Cube root of x squared. You would also be correct if you wrote cube root of x squared. Both of those are perfectly good answers, okay? It doesn't matter the order in which you do those operations. So the cube root of x and then square it or the cube root of x squared? Either way. The next one. So I'm taking the fourth root of what? Three squared. So this one I went, I was converting from exponential form to radical form. Here I'm trying to ask you to convert from what? Radical form to exponential. So this is going to be 2 times 3x squared to what power? Pardon me? Not 2 over 4. 1 over 4. I think you're very, you've been very comfortable. Most of this lesson has been going from exponential to radical. This means the fourth root of 3x squared. So raising it to the one-fourth power. So, you know, this is going to be, this is going to be 2 times 3 to the one-fourth times x to the two-fourths, which is just 2 times 3 to the one-fourth times x to the one-half. I would probably, I didn't say simplify, so this is technically, this is good. This is in exponential form, but you see that x to the squared to the one-fourth is the same as x to the one-half. So I would probably take either of these as an answer for this one, unless I explicitly said to simplify all exponents. Aria, you're giving me a look. Well, I can't because it's 2 times the fourth root of 3, not 2 times 3. It's 2 times 3 to the 1 fourth. Okay? I can't say that that's 6, okay? We'll deal with some more with those kind of expressions in the, uh, in the subsequent lesson. Okay, the next one. What's trying to trick you here? That one's so easy, I'm going to just let y'all do that one on your own. <laughs> just. We'll do it, and it just... We'll do it, and it's not that hard when you break it down. It looks hard, but let's let's focus on this one now. On this one, this one, what is it that I need to deal with right away? The negative, the negative exponent. So to make that negative exponent positive, I need to move that x, y where? To the bottom of the fraction. So I'm going to write this as 4. Yeah, the 4 is just along for the ride over x, y to the 3 fifths. Okay? Now they want me to write it in radical form. Okay? So radical means I'm writing with roots. What root am I taking? The fifth root of xy cubed, right? So this is just 4 over the fifth root of xy cubed. That's all it is. Okay? Now, that's not too terribly difficult, is it? I mean, you had to take care of the negative exponent, so 4 over xy to the 3 fifths. All the fractional exponent means, raising something to the 3 fifths means the fifth root of that, of that expression cubed. Okay? So now I'm in radical form and I have no negative exponents. Okay? Now the next one is in radical form, but I want to take it to what? Exponential form. So how do I do that? <clears throat> Just look at the top of the fraction. Okay. What am I taking the seventh root of? The only one that's not worked, Egypt. <laughs> it's the seventh root, not two to the seventh. So it's the seventh root of y to the six. So let's deal with the top of the fraction. The 2 is just there for the ride. This is 2 times y to the 6. Instead of taking the 7th root, that's the same as raising it to what power? 
1 over 7. Okay. So. Okay. That's good. Everyone say that. That's 2 times y to the 6 to the 1 7. That's the same as the 7th root of y to the 6. Okay. We're good with that? Okay. Let's look at the bottom. I'm taking the 7th root of everything. This is 128 x to the 7th y to the negative 1. I'm raising all of that to what power? 1 over 7. Okay. So now I have gotten rid of all the radicals and I've replaced them with, starts with an E, exponents. Okay. Now I need to simplify this. Okay. Now, y to the 6th to the 1 7th. What do you do with those exponents? You multiply y to the 6th to the 1 7th. The 6th and the 1 7th get multiplied together. Okay. So this becomes 2y to the what power? 6 over 7. Okay. We're all good there, right? Now, I need to distribute this exponent across everything that's in there. So I'm going to have 128 to what power? 1 over 7. I'm going to have x. x to the first power, right? 7 times 1 over 7 is what? 7 over 7, which another word for that is 1. So this is x. And then y to what power? Negative 1 7. Okay. We're going to get there. 1 28th of the 1 7. What does that mean? It means the what? Yeah, the seventh root of 128. If I don't know what that is, I just look at 128. It's going to be 2, but 128, even number, odd number. Divide 128 by 2 and you get 64. Divide that by 2 and you get 32. Divide that by 2 and you get 16. We keep on going. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 128 is equal to 2 to the 7th. So what's the 7th root of 128? It is 2. So this is this is 2y to the 6 over 7 over 2xy to the negative 1 over 7. What's another word for 2 over 2? 1. So this is y to the 6 over 7 over xy to the negative 1 over 7. Okay. Now, what do I need to do now? What have I got that I don't want in my final answer? A negative. negative exponent. How do I make that negative 1 7 a positive 1 7? I move it up. So this is y to the 6 over 7 times y to the 1 over 7 over x. y to the 6 over 7 times y to the 1 over 7. What do I do with those exponents? Add I add them. What is 6 sevenths plus 1 seventh? That is 7 sevenths. Another word for 7 sevenths is 1. So this is all, what's your answer? y over x. Now, isn't that just a lot of fun work to get to a nice little easy answer like that? Wasn't that a nice little journey? So, now, we're going to be working more on problems like this with simplifying expressions, okay? But what you want to be comfortable with at the end of this lesson, be very comfortable with exponential form, radical form, going back and forth between the two of those, okay? So I think you should be pretty well with that. Any questions over this? Okay, you've got a few minutes to go ahead and take a look at the homework uh, if you want, and then we'll move on.